Right, CFM 56-7, it's a Boeing 737 new gen. Um, I'm going to talk, start talking about engines. So we'll start at the front. We'll start at the front because I saw something the other day, not seen. Uh, but we'll get to that. So you've got your intake which is classed as the first part of the compression. It's a high bypass engine, but may, maybe in modern day language, it's more kind of mid, if you look at the latest, but it's still classed as a high bypass, which means about 80% of the thrust on this engine anyway, is come from the fan. And basically the fan is like a propeller and it's just increasing the flow of air. 20% goes to the turbine, which in turn, after combustion, rotates the fan and the compressor. Uh, the fan and booster is a four stage. Uh, so you've got primary and secondary air. Primary is the core. Secondary is bypassed around, so that's the air that's accelerated. The fan blades, there's 24 of them on this, on the Dash 7, They're made of titanium. So it rotates freely, or it should do. So there's 24 made of titanium, classed as a wide, uh, wide cord blade, fan blade, wide cord fan blade. We've got the spinner, which is this, and you've got the weight which go on here to balance the fan. It's an N1 engine. So you've got your T, T12, T12 sensor. It's temperature station 12. You've got your N1 shaft two shafts, N1 and N2. N1 goes all the way to the uh, low pressure turbine, it's a four stage low pressure turbine. So there's, there's two types of engine, there's uh, N1 or EPA. This uses N1. So it's kind of a, N1 is a direct measurement of RPM. It's normally given as percentage, but actually indicated N1 at 100% is, you could actually get a bit more out of it. It's not the maximum, but it's kind of a set value uh, from a manufacturer. N1 advantages over EPA is you can calculate N1 as a percentage of the shaft speed and convert it into a, a kind of percentage scale if you like but once the engine gets a bit older um, it's prone to error o over time Once the efficiency goes, the value of N1 is not as good. Whereas an EPA, if once you get wear, it will only give you as much EPA as it's going to give. It gives you a, a direct measurement. 
an actual measurement. Let's go through some some bits. This is, um, as you can see, it's got little holes in. It's purely for um, noise reduction. It's uh, anti-iced by or de-iced by bleed air, which exits at the bottom here. So the bleed air comes in, you get behind this, circulates around and just exhausts out. So you've got the abradable lining. I'll put this video on now, what I saw the other day. And it's uh, basically just, it's where the salt um, has been blown from the back of the engine forward. And it was quite lucky we found it because the fan had actually seized and it would have just, you, you can have a, quite a bit of damage on this because of the tip creep, I call it, of, what do we call it? I mean, when these are spinning centrifugally, we can start wearing into this. I mean, it's, that's what it's designed for, but you'll see the video. And behind, you've got the primary airflow goes into the booster. The spinner. And the T12, I hope I'm getting that right. I get mixed up with engines sometimes. T12 sensor. And if you can see it, you can't. The green coloured ones, the outlet guide vanes, are kind of just straight in the air. And you've got a free a oil cooler. You can just see them see it there maybe. And that calls your IDG the generator. Uh, these are called platforms. It's just bolted on, nuts and bolts, take one off, take this off, the platforms come up, slide out, the blades slide out. And this is looking aft forwards down the duct. Um, you can see the cooler there, the oil cooler bottom. And again, this is where 80% of the thrust comes out. And that's, that's a general overview of the intake and the fan.